we are finally seeing William R. Anderson at board one versus Dr. B. We'll finally get an answer to the age-old question, who is Wanderer 15? Hello again, Liari. Nice to have you back. I recognize that username. Set no one asks, what's the craziest looking bag you've ever seen? I assume that is in reference to tile bag. That's a great question. An awful draw for Dave, uh, maybe even Bayful. Akritur asks, is that a Spencerian spelling of aloof on Dave Weekend's rack? <laughs> Ooh, uh, foundering. Actually, uh, that's very close. Uh, Waifu uh, was in OSPD1, but it was spelled W-A-E-F-U uh, as a five-letter word and then was taken out um, some time ago. Oh, I'm on mute. I'm sorry. I was trying to say if Waifu were valid here, it would probably be the best play. Because you could play Waifu and then hook the L later. It would be a really nice play. <laughs> yes, uh, it would not be that uh, It would be not be not that bad at all. It would be a pretty good play. Uh, looks like we're having some reminiscing in the chat for Word Racer. Um, yep, that was. those are definitely fun times. And uh, our own William R. Anderson was a fairly prolific Word Racer himself and probably a prolific prolificer as well. Prolific was... Uh, I think was is appropriate to use. I believe it's no longer active, but it was a game on Facebook uh, with Collins as the lexicon for playing Boggle, essentially. Huh. I wonder why Dave chose to play Awful and not Wayful. It's a lot lower scoring. It's like eight points less. I'm sure he had his reasons. I'm sure he saw Wayful. It's hard to explain that, though. Looks like we've got a message further up. Uh, Mansimo7 is watching us uh, from Kenya. Welcome, welcome. Nice to have you here. We've got uh, Van Dweller is uh, clearly a big fan of Will Anderson. I see, uh, <laughs> see some happiness expressed in the chat to see him on the stream. A pretty long play for Will uh, was on the cards. that multiple uh, aguises that play. The one making ZA and EW is probably a one worth looking at. Yeah, that looks maybe good. even something like maybe even something like Ausel uh, to the L. That can't be too bad. Yeah, I mean, Azul scores 28, whereas Aguise is 35. So Aguise is definitely the the more uh, aggressive option. Of course, the problem with Agwise is you, you uh, expose the A to that double letter score and give back very easy comebacks for your opponent. Or so. something like Gauze, if you don't want to do that. Ah, Gauze might be better, yeah. Similar score and no uh, easy double letter score. Yeah, it looks like Will's going to line up Agwise on his rack and think about it. Quackle actually says that Agwise is the best play. Well, it says Gauze is pretty close. It's very, very close. And then it also suggests uh, just Fizz, just playing the I and the Z for 35 as one option. All of these plays keeping leaves that are quite vowel heavy, obviously. So difficult spot for Will to start the game. Speaking of difficult spots to be in, uh, Dave has drawn the Q, which I don't think he's too thrilled to see either. Although a play like Gauze or uh, Agais might just expose the U in the perfect spot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Almost Quiniella uh, for Dave, this one dial off. Looks like Will goes back to looking at Gauze again. I think Gauze is a pretty strong option here. 
34 points with the Z overlapping to make Zah. Uh, guys, guys is a pretty common phony. It's probably because of Agwais and Geyser. Uh, and that's where people make that up from. Yeah, I've seen that on the board too. All right, Gauze comes down. Good play. I'm sure Dave. Also interesting to note that uh, Dave has the L hook for off for awful. That's a tough one to support. Oh, nice. I'm sure D uh, Dave was glad to see that the U and Awful remained open because he's got all sorts of Q plays that have to go through that U. One of which Lewis has suggested is uh, Equali. Yeah, I think Equali is the best play here. And it looks like Dave is also zooming in on that option. Yep, sure enough, there it is. And that leaves a uh, nice old double double for William of Pignolia. This guy's just wasting no time seeing the best play and putting it down quickly. Yeah, Pignolia the best by far, and Will insta slaps that down on the board. He's going to take a 70 point lead, 124 to 54. Rebecca says, yum, looking forward to making pesto in a few weeks. Yes, uh, alluding to the definition of pignolia. Oh, nice. Jeremy Thanks. points out that Dave is very close to requalified uh, on his rack, just needs an R. Ooh. And Dave's just the kind of guy who might see a thing like that. He's always coming up with crazy long words. And all of the R's are still unseen. You've got six of them you can draw. So the beautiful thing here is that if, uh, if Dave plays a play like Keith, K-I-E-F or K-E-E-F, which is a strong equity play anyway, he holds on to the D and the E and does fish for requalified, so he can kind of accomplish all of that all at once. Or you could even play something like OKE uh, along Pignolia. That doesn't score too bad. Uh, and it keeps F I E D. Uh, all you need is just, just CR. True, yeah. I think this is fine. It goes for yeah. scores. Yeah, 42 points. Can't argue with that. No R, sad. And ironically, Dave also needs an R for his bingos, which are uh, Dame Wart and Ward Moat. Yeah, so he'll be very sad to see there's no R's in the game. Yeah, Jeremy points out picked him. Yeah, I think that looks quite good. Get rid of uh, C. So ideally, you want to be getting rid of two or three of the C, G, M, V, maybe even the U. Yeah, victim does that. Another interesting choice here is muting uh, through the N and Pignolia. It's the triple. Victim is 31, muting is 33. Both pretty solid options. Oh, Sidewinder points out that muting sets up the V because you can turn ag into vag next turn. 
Although it is pretty tough to find words ending with IV. Like, I guess you could play div or something. But that's a rather specific word you've got to fit. Yeah, all the C. That's likely it. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. Tag. What do we think? Chat, muting, victim, something else? You've also got VUG as an option, I suppose. Might be a good time for a poll. I will do that right now. Jucko calling out Mouty Wart. Yeah, you just need to disconnect an I and an OR and you're in business. There's a bunch of spellings of Mouty Wart. You're bound to hit one of them if you keep fishing, right? <laughs> Oh, two W's, yeah. It would have to be played through the EW on the board. Play the victim, says said no one, yeah. Quackle slightly prefers that you play the muting, but they're both pretty good plays. Victim has a little bit worse defensive value since you're opening an easy triple for your opponent. Muting doesn't have that drawback, but they're both pretty good. I hear people in the chat asking whether the picture froze. I think it's just that these players are very still. <laughs> yeah, that is part of it. Also, to be fair, I did have to refresh my Twitch feed uh, just about a minute ago because mine froze on Dave's previous rack. So it actually might not be just you, Omri. Just give it a quick refresh, uh, and you should be up to date on the picture if there's an issue there. Might be a server side thing. Uh... Also check if the clock is still running because Wills is starting to run pretty low. He's using a lot of time on this turn. He's uh, looking at the VUM as an option, apparently. Looks like uh, in the poll so far, it's pretty evenly split. We've got muting with three votes, victim with three, someone has voted for something else. I think that might have been Rebecca with the VUM suggestion. Muting has just pulled ahead with four. Oh, muting's gone ahead with six now. There we go. But Will has opted for victim. So by putting the V in the triple, you've given Dave a pretty obvious best play. You can put waived for a whole bunch of points. Yeah, that's one of the risks of the play. And yeah, Dave has to happens to have a good set of tiles. Although Will has drawn the blank. Henry points out almost dog foods for Will, and that would be a triple-triple in that case if that were his rack and it were unobstructed. Vanita points out dog house. Ooh, very cool. Jeremy Hildebrand says, I want to see Will play Goofus because I've never seen that on a board. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. 
Yeah, and Goofus is a pretty good play, right? 30 points. Picked up that triple. Yeah. Omri says, the quality of the broadcast is amazing. Well done, guys. Uh, yeah, thank our lovely producers, Christian and co, that are behind the scenes making all of this happen. We appreciate all the hard work they're putting in. And Akritur, I am glad that you are enjoying this, uh, even as a quote-unquote Scrabble noob. We are doing our best to make this accessible for everyone. Yeah, it's tricky. Scrabble's such a deep game. There's so much to get into, both on a, a high level and also just like giving some introductory tips. We try to balance both those things. Because we know that there's a broad audience of, you know, some of the world's best players are watching, but also new players are watching. And we want everybody to enjoy it. So we'll try to balance all of that. Fogu is pointed out. Yeah, that's Fogu's and Goofus. So I think that that is a good day. Probably the best in the situation. Yeah, Fogu keeping your D and your S looks like a very strong option. Definitely. Scott mentions Moody and Yi looks good for Dave or next to Keith if open. That's fair. A uh, good question from Mick Demack. Does Nigel, as in Nigel Richards, keep participating in Scrabble tournaments in English? Unfortunately, he won't be part of the French Language World Championships in two weeks. Um, I don't think this is actually related to any specific dictionary, uh, Mick, truth be told, uh, because uh, Nigel was possibly going to be an entrant here as well. But there were some concerns potentially with uh, worst case scenarios involved in contracting COVID while abroad and getting back uh, into the country when he leaves. I believe that was some of the considerations. I don't think it's just the French tournaments, truthfully. Uh, it's also the English ones where he is considering uh, all sorts of ways things could potentially go wrong. I imagine we'll see Nigel back on the scene someday, but just don't exactly know when at this time. All right, Will is indeed going to play Fogu. That was like the, the best play. Yeah, Finesse pointed out something like Moody do me. Uh, what what code did you put for uh, Dave? Probably scores around 40. Yep, I imagine Dave is going to make a play like Doomy quite fast because it's uh, pretty clearly better than any other option you're going to find here. He does also have Moody for almost the same amount of points uh, in the top right corner, uh, hooking the Y on Equality, but uh, I don't think there's any reason to do that. Yeah, nice little fit there. Yeah, Ben Ben seems okay uh, from Will's point of view. It was that or probably changing. I think Ben is okay. While we're chatting about Nigel, uh, Goatees should come down. Some discussion about uh, where uh, Dave's play is going to go down, including, or not Dave's, I think, uh, sorry, not Dave's play, future plays. I will take that back. Um, future plays involving, yeah, Vend. There was a word and related word removed based on the definition in the Canadian Scrabble Collins Dictionary. So yeah, that hook is no longer available. Dave is going for a valid play here, playing Goatees. Nice score. Will has a lovely rack. Uh, a, B, C, D, E, and S. That's, uh, S is a little bit early in that order there. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he's uh, safely got some options here. 
Uh, in the chat further up, uh, Tomu Ovye asks, what makes Nigel so special in the game of Scrabble? We could spend uh, basically an entire broadcast uh, just barely touching the surface of why. Uh, but Scott has uh, succinctly summarized a little bit of why Nigel is considered the greatest of all time. Um, has made all sorts of crazy plays, many that are over nine letters long. Yeah, and that's a pretty fairly decent early summary um, of what makes Nigel so special. Dave must be grinding his teeth, uh, the sight of that track. Yeah, that's a lot of err. <laughs> So a couple of bingos available here for Dave. I'm guessing chat can find them without too much trouble. Or sorry, for Will, not for Dave, my bad. A couple of seven letter words, each starting with an S. There's also abduces, uh, which reminds me of the very lovely abducens, which is a sticky S. But yeah, I think something like scab should be okay. Just want to remind you that the, the U hook on Vend was removed, right? Yes. That is correct. Yeah, that's so... what I was alluding to earlier as far as the. Oh, okay, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's also a reminder uh, for me to go through the list again. <laughs> so I, I believe that this does not play, right? Because the, that spot is not valid. Yeah, so Will looks like he's finding scuba, which is one of the two options. Yeah, scuba and uh, scabbed are the bingos he's got playable. There are the mentions of the different words that Nigel's played. It's Hyroduel, I believe, is the one that was played against uh, the late Randy Greenspan as one of those amazing plays uh, that he's made through disconnected letters. All right, scab for 80 points is the best play, and Will finds it. That'll give him the lead, 278 to 259. And rip, Dave Weekend. Yep. <laughs> um, Mick DeMac mentions, in French, Nigel has by far the best streak of perfect duplicate games in a row in the French World Championships. And the second best is only eight in comparison to Nigel's 30, which is just amazing. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Nigel does not speak French. Um, he learned just enough, I believe. Mick, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe he learned just enough to communicate scores um, and other basics for the purpose of uh, classic Scrabble. Uh, but other than that, does not speak French. I believe he learned all the words in like nine weeks or something. It, it, it's It's unreal. <laughs> Yeah, definitely unreal. Uh, I have a very interesting story from the time I played Nigel the first time uh, as a 14-year-old kid. And that was a game he made two disconnected nines. So he made Zoetropes and Trefoiled uh, to win by like 30 or 40 points. Jeez. So I, 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 was, I, was so, so, I was so, so bummed after that game. Uh, <laughs> but that was my first experience of Nigel. But you got a cool story out of it. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Wow. Well, Dave has one play here that scores 28, but the leave is R, R, R. He can play trip, keeping er. I think that's better than exchanging, but it's not fun. <laughs> Henry in chat says, the best end game was sticking Chia with an R to win by two points. Yeah, he had a game with the U.S. Nationals similarly where he stuck Ben Schaumann with an L. And Ben just it lost his mind, like, oh, my God, I can't play this L. What's happening? Uh, we made fun of him for years for that, getting L stuck. Yeah.
Yeah, Henny, it's it's uh, funny. I've actually had this come up on board. Um, I uh, use French uh, fairly regularly in my profession as a flight attendant. And some of my francophone colleagues, uh, when they hear that I play Scrabble, it's like, oh, there's this, I heard about this uh, guy who learned French uh, <laughs> um, uh, to play in French Scrabble tournaments. And, and I was like, yeah, I know who that is. And they're like, oh, what's his name? So I tell them all about Nigel Richards. And yeah, uh, it, there's a couple of stories that uh, came out on the internet in articles and seems to have spread far and wide in the French speaking world, even to people who know nothing about tournament Scrabble. Difficult turn here for Will as he's looking at a rack full of vowels and trying to find the best way to navigate through it. A lot of his best plays are kind of vowel dumping sorts of moves. Yeah, I think he surely has to play along the triple file, uh, given that the X is still in the bag. Oh, yeah. I have to do that. Maybe something like Lai or uh, LEI. That's okay. Yeah, those look very solid. The score is exactly even, 278, 278. So, you know, maybe if you were behind, you would want to leave, you know, volatile spots open like that. But if the score is exactly even, then it's a little different. Looks like REI comes down. Similar idea. Play off two of those vowels and block the spot. Sounds like somebody's playing the piano outside the stream room. That's great. <laughs> Henny asks, what's the blank in that word? That's Pignolia with an L as in Lima. Looks like Dave has drawn a seven letter word of ternary, but unfortunately there is no spot to play ternary. You hate to see it. There's some discussion in the chat of uh, trancy, but that's unfortunately not a word. You can only spell trancy, trans e y. Yeah, some, uh, something like a r y uh, right at the bottom looks okay, actually. Yeah. You said, you uh, just it out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that looks pretty strong. Jeremy Hildebrand says, so Scrabble added Ollie, but they left out Nolly. I'm assuming that is in reference to the skateboarding moves. Yeah, interesting observation there. One Wonderful Fish asked, do Scrabble commentators have to memorize the NATO alphabet as part of their training? Uh, no, not necessarily, but I happen to uh, learned it as a result of my previous aviation jobs. Um, Alaska Airlines, the company I used to work for before Air Canada, um, I worked for them on the ground, and one of my exams was the phonetic alphabet. I had to uh, learn those different ones, and that was for the purpose of uh, airport codes so that you could identify which letters you're actually referring to for those three-letter airport codes. So I happened to do that as a function of my previous job. But no, Scrabble commentators are not required to do that. <laughs> so if you want to get wild and crazy, you can play errancy through that C, but that just puts an E in the triple A, and that seems a little bit too wide open. Yeah, ARY is by far the more reasonable option there. Yeah, he's going to play it. Okay. Seems good. More miserable one pointers for, for Will here. Alex Dings asks, so what does the exam for Scrabble commentators entail? There's not really an exam, to be honest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my start with commentating was uh, in Prague at the uh, Scrabble Players Championship that year. Uh, someone suggested that I go on the broadcast that they were running at the time when I failed to qualify for the invitational event. 
Uh, I played in an open tournament instead that I very fortunately won. And then I had a few days off after that. So I got to join their broadcast. And to be honest, the rest is history because from there I've been lucky enough to have lots of opportunities to uh, lend my voice and occasional insight uh, into some of the matches between the best players in the world. Usually we have expert commentators uh, that are far more prolific than I am with their results and their ratings, and that provides a nice little balance. One Wonderful Fish says, who knew Scrabble commentator and air traffic controller had such an overlap? I have not been an air traffic controller. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an interesting little uh, career path there. That one I have not done. <laughs> Let's see, some suggestions in the chat. We see Enroll, Uri, another vote for Enroll. Ballington asks, do Scrabble tournament directors slash arbiters need to be very strong players? Not at all. Uh, there are directors of uh, varying levels of rating. I think it's just an awareness of what the rules are as far as uh, what each governing body sets out for their players. Um, it helps if you are a player because you understand some of the situational context uh, for some of those rules. But beyond that, no, you don't necessarily have to be a strong player at all. Certainly for commentating, though, it helps. <laughs> More so than for directing. Definitely helps to have an understanding of all the strategy and all the words involved in these games, because these guys are playing at a high level, and it's hard to understand what's going on at times. It takes a lot of practice to kind of get a hang for kind of understanding the players thinking in these, these difficult positions. Uh, looks like Dave is going to show that he's the goatiest player around here. Uh, by playing in NTH there. <laughs> nice. Uh, that looks that looks like a good play. Certainly not the toadiest player around here. Oh, I was going to make the toadiest <laughs> stick. <if> you didn't say <laughs> it. <laughs> All right. Godius and S. Nice play. That is best by far. And Dave's going to pull ahead again. 334 to 318. Hanny Blank comments, uh, thought Lion Cell was a wild new internet subculture. <laughs> the alternate definitions there, very good. OK, this is very interesting now. So it looks like Will's going to stick out the J. And uh, I don't think Dave can do much about it. Oh, yeah, because he's got all these N's and T. Yeah, not much he can do. Ooh, do you guys know the definition of Jato? I just learned this a second ago. Uh, jet assisted takeoff, I believe. Yeah, there you go. Another aviation word for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks like he's also considering Je here. Yeah, if he could cheat and look at Dave Wigan's rack, he would definitely play a Jato because he would know that there's nothing Dave can do about that J. He has no valid words from the J to the triple. We should probably bring up the unseen tile pool. There's only 13 tiles left in this game, and it's a very interesting pool. We've got uh, three E's, and then the other 10 consonants. The other 10 letters are all consonants. Um, so E's are going to be important tiles for these two guys to draw, especially for Dave, because he's pretty short on vowels already. All right, Jato does come down. And so Will's up by 30, and Dave's got a pretty awkward rack here. I think he's in trouble. And Will's got the X, among other things, going into the end here. It's going to be very helpful to outrun. So there's two tiles in the bag. And we happen to know that it's an E and an S. E, S in the bag. I'm guessing if you're Dave, you're probably trying to fish for one of those E's because you're still so heavy on consonants. Lewis points out land. Yeah, actually, I was just thinking of that. 
That is reasonably difficult to block. Probably, yeah, it's, it's, all, it's almost impossible to block it entirely. Unless you play something like text, maybe, and that still sticks out uh, an E there. So. One thing Dave might want to try is fishing a T, because if he draws one of those three E's, he can turn La into Lanarats. I'm sure. I'm sure you're seeing, uh, looking at the tile uh, pool and considering those options. Yeah. A lot of people in the chat looking at uh, Lant as an option. Will would have Exurb, I believe, would be. Uh... A reasonable response to that. Yeah, the problem with Lant is when you empty the bag, your opponent knows what you have, and so they can block your bingos. Um, the The beauty of fishing one tile instead of two is it leaves one in the bag and leaves some uncertainty for your opponent in this position. Which, which is why I really think it behooves Dave to find a one tile fish that works and not a two tile one. Yeah, because something like land, uh, yeah, it's just gonna you play like exurb and then uh, that takes out the S. You can't hook an S to ET. So I don't think uh, what streams just streams is probably uh, what you'll have. Yeah, I think NY is okay. So he needs to draw the S for slatterns. Fishing for a nine, we love to see it. And yeah, he gets it. He gets the S for Slatterns. Wow. Sick pull. Now, if you're Will, what do you do here? I bet if you're Will, you start looking for nines that your opponent might have. And they're both very capable of uh, finding nines. So here's the thing. From Will's perspective, Slattered is the only bingo Dave can possibly have. Like, if you look at the entire pool, there's no other bingo possible besides Slattern's. And Will has five minutes to go through all the racks and figure that out. I think he is capable of doing that. Yeah, someone points out Joe uh, with the X. Uh, yeah, that's that's perfect. Uh, I don't think uh, Will will be able to outrun him. Uh, oh, sorry, Dave would be able to outrun him. Uh, one show is played. Yeah, I mean, this is such a difficult position because it's not just about blocking slatterns. It's also about scoring enough points to outrun. I mean, you're only up by 15. Yeah, this is not easy. All right, he does play jeu. And that should do it, I think. Think. Yeah, Crackle is saying Joe is 100% no matter what Dave has. And uh, yeah, with the actual rack of, of Flatterns, no bingo anymore and no, uh, no super high scoring plays either. <laughs> yeah, Tony in chat saying, Will can relax. <laughs> nice pun. Will can relax indeed as he's going to pull this one out. Dave just kind of shuffling his tiles around, looking for something he can make happen, but there just isn't much of anything he can do. Will does a nice job of controlling the board here in the end game and preventing Dave from being going out. Quite a run for Will, who was four and seven, and now he's going to be twelve and seven, surging to the top of the standings. Here he was 
near the bottom, and now he's going to be probably in the top six or seven, I think. Remarkable comeback indeed. That's who Wanderer 15 is. He's a champion. To answer your question, chat. What is Will's best play if Herb is blocked? Uh, let's see. That's a good question. Not even sure how he's going to block uh, Herb by, unless like, he plays something like Rend, maybe. Uh, oh, yeah. Michael suggests just playing Send, just S E N into the D. Okay. Uh, oh, but that doesn't work. That gives back Heben, H E B E N, for a big overlap. If you play Sned, S N E D, then you block all the things. Paulington in chat asks, how many players are taking part altogether? So we've got two divisions of cons players who are here in Naperville this week, and uh, there are 38 players in Division 1 and another 32 uh, in Division 2 for 70 in total. And then there's also a uh, TWL division across the hallway, and I don't actually know how many people are in that, but I'm sure we can uh, get the bot to hook you up with some standings on that, and you can check it out. All right, so it looks like Slart has been played by Dave, followed by Herbed for Will to go out. Okay. So the final score is going to be Will Anderson, 414, Dave Wiegand, 369. Wander, 15, wanders into a victory here. Not many players have taken down the great Bing this weekend, but Will is going to notch a big win for himself. So what's something that stands out from this game for uh, both of you guys? Well, for me, I think, yeah, I think, I think both players played really well. Uh, yeah, maybe the victim play for Will. Uh, that's something that was debated uh, heatedly in the chat. Uh, but as far as Dave is concerned, yeah, I, I don't think he did uh, anything even remotely suboptimal. Uh, he almost played his best. Like, I really like the NY play at the end. So, yeah, I think he did his job. It's one of those games in a tournament. You always have them. So. I think he's still, he's still in a great position. Looks like in the chat as well, just uh, Wayful at the beginning versus Awful. Some discussion about those two. Yeah, let's see if I can ask about that when I see Dave next. <laughs> 